Kia ora, I'm Sharon Brett Kelly. Today on The Detail... It's an unsolvable question. That question? What to do about Christchurch's food trucks? The local arts centre wants to give more access to street vendors, but other businesses which have invested in buildings in the CBD think it's unfair. Two sides divided by a river and a battle for a slice of the business pie. They just rock up in a food truck. They don't have supplied toilets, they don't get building consents, they don't have to pay the rates. It's, a, it's an unfair playing field. Unfair or simply a way to make money? We're complementary and we're in a slightly different part of the city and we've got a million visitors a year that we need to provide food and drink to. I see it all as the part of the ecosystem of a big city. I think it does speak to kind of two different parts of the city where you've got you know, the, the heritage and the arts and then you've got the staunch business owners and investors and they are both so important to the city but they don't get along and there's a real, I imagine the real clash of personalities is getting in the way too. This is Sinead Gill from The Press. She says the stout came out of the blue just over a week ago. So the Central City Business Association presented a petition to the council. It wasn't on the agenda. It was a, a last-minute entry. Okay, doke. We'll now got Annabelle here on behalf of Central City Business Association who will present an open letter and petition regarding requests for more food truck licences. Good morning, Mayor Far Phil, councillors and the chief executive. And it was a response to an article that had been written a week or so before, prior where the art centre's desire to create this food truck village, I guess, was, was written about. They'd submitted a resource consent. So still very early days, but that obviously sparked a lot of concern from the brick and mortar business community in the central city. And so what happened at that meeting if this came out of the blue to a lot of people? Yeah, so the uh, Business Association, they presented this petition and said that... Our executive board unanimously agreed on one thing. If the art centre moves forward with its plans, as reported in the press, to allow 33 food trucks to operate on their site for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, we call for all long-term funding to the art centre's trust to be halted. These businesses had had one of the harshest winters yet. Obviously, there's a recession, and they felt that it was not only unfair because food trucks are so much cheaper to operate. And it sends a really dangerous message. Why pour your heart into a permanent business when you can pop up a caravan and cash in? But also unfair because the food trucks are a bad look. Let's not forget what the art centre stands for. It's not drive-through takeaways. It's a cultural hub that reflects the history and the heart of Christchurch. Turning it into a food truck depot makes as much sense as hosting a rock concert in Tauranga. They think that it reminds people of the earthquakes and that it is basically spitting in the face of all the people who had invested their blood, sweat and dollars in into the, the city centre, setting up these brick-and-mortar shops. Um... Hi, Richard Peebles. Hi, everyone. Um, Richard Peebles, who seems to be one of the key people in the fight against this, he had an interesting quote. He said, we don't want temporary caravans and bohemian parks all over Christchurch. If we knew that we could have mobile food trucks and mobile retail shops on the, on the sites in the CBD, I wonder if we would have built in the first place. I didn't, I, I didn't understand that it was actually an option. He wasn't representing the business association. I believe he was there in support. He owns Riverside Market and Little High Eatery, which is a, a separate eatery. Half of the signatories in the petition were his tenants. So he, Riverside actually only turned five the other week. So it's now such a cornerstone of... Christchurch and such an integral part of the city centre that a lot of people consider it as a city centre. You know, Cathedral Square is um, an eyesore. And yeah, if, you, if you're asking a mate where you want to meet, it's usually Riverside or Art Centre. So they're sort of competing, the Art Centre and Riverside are kind of competing with each other for customers. I think that's definitely the concern of 
Riverside and, and the Central City Business Association, I don't think the arts seem to see themselves as competition because they've had food trucks there for decades. It's al- almost always been a weekend thing. And uh, we reported back in May that they were trialling this weekday lunchtime kind of food truck market. So they've had they've actually had about a dozen food trucks on site for you know the last six or so months. And we haven't heard any upset about that, um, not even through this harsh winter. So now that they're trying to formalise that, extend the hours, have, you know, twice as many food trucks able to operate on site, you know, that's sparked a lot of concern. But Dimitri's of Dimitri's Greek Food put it best. He runs a food truck at the Art Centre. He's been running it there for almost 40 years. He also has a site at Riverside. So he operates Riverside during the week and then on the weekend he sets up this truck and you know he says it's it's a relaxing place basically because there's fewer customers and um, he didn't sign the petition but because he thinks both sides are wrong basically he doesn't think the art centre is competition. Riverside gets between 10,000 and 14,000 visitors a day and that's Crash City Council statistics. It is huge. The art centre, after that Wednesday council meeting when the petition was presented, during the lunch break I actually went over to the art centre and there were about seven trucks open and fewer than a dozen customers. And we're talking school holidays, so prime time for, you know, kids to be out and about, I guess, you know, with with their parents needing to give them something to do. So, Mm. yeah, it's it's hard to see how the food trucks are going to be a threat but obviously getting 25 in there is is a huge jump. That is a big difference. So the art centre, is is it owned by the city council? No, it's owned by a trust. And I think this story is kind of so much bigger than just the food trucks. I mean, I don't want to be as romantic as to say it's about, you know, that, that fight for, uh, you know, Riverside versus art centre, you know, arts versus business. But the, if you take it back to March the council released its draft 10-year budget and the Arts Centre wasn't on there. So for the three years leading up to this point, they had received about $1.8 million a year in operational support. That wasn't there. The Arts Centre freaked out. You know, they're saying that they're going to become insolvent. This place has been funded and, and like all arts organisation, relies on public funding. Um, to withdraw that means that any arts organisation would fail and, and th- that is what will happen here. They launched this huge campaign and almost 60% of all of the submissions to the long-term plan mentioned, please fund the art centre. And the art centre wasn't even on the plan, so it wasn't even a question. These are people who went out of their way, I guess. And the council had twice as many submissions to their long-term plan. For anyone in the, in the know, long-term plans are, are not exactly, you know, a riveting. Hot thing. <laughs> yeah, they're not riveting. They're not things people engage in, really, unfortunately. But they had twice as many submissions as the last record of submissions that the council had, had. So there was this, you know, we're talking, I think, over 4,000 people submitted saying they wanted the Arts Centre to get money. And meanwhile, there are, there's the mayor and some city councillors saying, well, the Arts Centre should look at its books. They need to look beyond, you know, outside of the box. Don't just think about your art programmes. Think about how you can generate more revenue. And so, you know, May is when they start ex- the Arts Centre starts experimenting with this weekday food truck idea. And so there is that argument of, well, this is them taking that on board yeah. and trying that. And they mention that in their application for resource consent that, you know, we need to find a way to generate revenue. This is, you know, one way that we can try and pay the bills. During this time as well, they got rid of their Sunday market, created a Saturday market, much larger. Uh, They almost doubled the cost for venue, like, stall holders uh, to be there. So they're definitely making moves to try and be more sustainable and to not rely on council funding. And in the end... um, just a circle that square. Um, they, in the end, they they did get funding from the council in their ten year budget, but it is technically just for three years. Uh, so, I guess it's a perennial issue of financial sustainability and generating more revenue. And the uh, the yeah the food trucks is one way to manage that, I guess. And how much did the art centre get? Basically the same as what they did last time. So $5.5 million over three years. However, it's being funded over 10 years. So that's why you'll see 
people saying, you know, 5.5 over 10. Um, I guess councils just collect rates at a, at a slower pace. Um, it works out to be just under $3 per, uh, per household on average. What's your sense of what Christchurch people think about this? I mean, the word fury has been <laughs> used to describe this um, stout that's going on. I think people are really split over it because on the one hand we're all so grateful to Riverside and to the likes of Richard Peebles for having invested so much in the city and making it the great place it is now. It is, it's, it's gorgeous. So to hear them say, well, our tenants might have to close up shop or they're struggling to pay the bills. Um, it, it does make you feel, oh, well, we don't want them to suffer. We don't want all of this effort to, you know, be, be for nothing or to cause hardship. So there are people who are kind of calling for compromise. One of those calling for compromise is Leanne Watson, head of Business Canterbury, formerly the Chamber of Commerce. The last thing we want to be perceived as is a, a small town having having bickers between, uh, you know, t- two key parts of, of our central city. I mean, the art centre, you know, is a real jewel in our crown. They've spent millions of dollars restoring it. It's a fantastic facility that does attract tourists into the central city. And then on the flip side, we've got, you know, businesses that, again, have made a significant investment and, in, you know, setting themselves up back back into the central city um, when they could have chose to go elsewhere. And they've had a really tough couple of years. And so everyone is hanging on by a thread. And this is where we get these sorts of tensions, which is which is really challenging. But what we do know is that uh, tourists come into the central city and they will go and have a look at the art centre. They will go and um, and tour through Riverside, which is another real jewel in our crown. Um, you know, some of the bars and restaurants in and along the terrace and those surrounding areas, you know, some of the fit-ups are world-class and that's what we should be talking about um, to attract our tourists into the city, to get them to come in here, spend money, support our local economy uh, and, and hopefully there's room for everyone. But we do need to understand that, you know, we, we need to make sure that there is an even playing field and these sorts of challenges need, need to be addressed. Is there room though, Leanne, for the food trucks and the these established restaurants? Is there enough business for both of them? That's the key, isn't it? I mean, if we can grow the size of the pie versus, um, you know, changing the sizes of the slices and everyone gets a little bit less, that's not what we want here. We actually want to create a bigger pie. You know, we want to make sure that there is room for everyone. Um, now, you know, obviously with, um, you know, the, the situation with the food trucks, uh, the food trucks have always been part of Christchurch, as they are in lots of other main centres. Um, but what, we, what we're finding, I guess, is that the growth of the food trucks may be having an impact at a time where it's really been really, really tough for some of those local businesses who, you know, have struggled over the last couple of years. So I think that is partly what is driving the frustration that we've seen in this particular situation. I don't believe that, you know, there's ever been any intention to um, take business away from other businesses in the central city. So it's probably an un- unintended uh, sort of consequence of, of maybe what's going on. Do you know how much these businesses pay in rates, roughly? Um, look, I don't, I don't know the exact amount, but of course, um, the you know businesses do pay a higher proportion of um, rates in comparison to the general public. So there is a commercial rate which is higher Would it be um, thousands? than the general public. Oh, yes, it can be absolutely. This is why it's really important that the council, in this case, um, you know, do actually understand some of the impacts. Um, and I think again, that's part of the Central City Business Association's challenge is that on one hand the council have made a decision to cut funding for the art centre and so they're doing what they can to generate some more income for them for themselves on the advice of the council and then on the other hand you've got businesses who are paying a higher proportion of rates to the same council but perhaps not re- receiving the same playing field um, as you know those that they're providing for the food truck so I mean it is more complex than what everyone thinks I think. So does the council need to approach this a different way and maybe look at changing the way it rates properties? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Look, we've been having that, that conversation with um, with the council for a long time. Just not not so much in terms of, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, because there is a, a, a differential between, um, you know, general rates and commercial rates, 
what we need to make sure is that differential is going back into supporting those businesses who are paying paying that differential rate. Uh, and so, you know, that is understanding what the needs of those businesses are. Businesses are what drives our economy. Businesses are what provides the livelihood for um, the residents of, of Christchurch who are the ones paying, you know, paying the rates. And so, you know, when you talk to, to local councils, there's a huge emphasis put on the general ratepayer, which is the member of the public. But we don't see the same emphasis put on supporting the business community. Business Canary's role has been very, very strong advocating on behalf of our business community to make sure that what the council is doing is providing an environment that is really conducive to those businesses growing, um, to the you know to them being more productive and more innovative. And so they have to understand some of the decisions that they make and sometimes um, work against that. Is this anti-competitive on the part of the Central City Business Association? They're trying to stop other businesses? Oh, no, I, look, I don't think that's what they're trying to do. I think, you know, that the message that I've certainly received is that they want an, an, an even playing field. This is not about um, stopping other businesses. This is about saying these businesses have invested significantly in setting themselves up in the central city. They're paying um, either rates directly if they're building owners or, they're, or through their, their landlords. And yet, a couple of blocks down the road, we've got um, food trucks who potentially are not not paying the same rates. What has been um, the case in the past is those food trucks have primarily been involved around, you know, different festivals and things like that. So they're they're operating in a different environment. And I think what they're concerned about is they're starting to creep closer to the environment that these businesses who are paying those commercial rates, who have invested, you know, in bricks and mortar to get themselves up and running and as, as a result carry much higher costs of doing business and all of a sudden... Um, you know, we've got this uneven playing field and that's, I think, what needs to be, you right. know, needs to be addressed. Dr Eric Crampton, I don't know if you read his opinion piece on, on this. He's a chief economist with the New Zealand Initiative yes, based that. in Wellington. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, he's saying that, oh, lucky, lucky Christchurch to have this problem. He wishes Wellington yes. could have the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look, I mean, you know, this is the conversation that started between you and I around. I'd, I'd much rather that we were, you know, in the media for, um, you know, talking about the wonderful bars and restaurants and hospitality offerings that Christchurch offers, rather than you know, sort of airing our dirty laundry <laughs> through through these sorts of situations. So, what would you like to happen? Hopefully, what we can do is come up with a situation where, you know, the, the two complement each other rather rather than potentially compete with each other where everyone has a piece of the pie and the pie continues to grow as opposed to us, you know, slicing it up in smaller slices and, and having having this uh, situation. Because that's, that's in no one's best interest. It's, you know, the food trucks are businesses, the art centre are businesses, you know, the bars and the restaurants um, that, are, that are in the central city are also businesses. And everyone, you know, wants to actually do well. How would they complement each other, Leanne? Look, I, I guess it depends on what the offering is in those food trucks. But if you've got a tourist visiting the art centre and they want to get a coffee, um, you know, after they've been inside and, and visited some of the tenants inside the the art centre, the chances are they're probably still going to go and have a meal um, somewhere in the central city along the terrace or in Riverside um, in the evening. Uh, I mean, if it's pouring down with rain, you're not going to sit outside and have a meal outside a food truck either, are you? No. So they they are slightly different offerings. You know, it's just a matter of understanding what that might look like. And that's where the conversation comes in between the two organisations. Yeah, because is it tough times in Christchurch? Christchurch Central businesses are, um, are suffering the way a lot are around the country? Yeah, look, I think, you know, in general, it's been really tough for businesses over the last couple of years. Um, but actually... And, of course, winter in Christchurch for hospitality um, is also always a little harder because, you know, people tend to stay indoors a bit more and stay stay at home because it's a bit colder down here than in mm. the North Island. However, what we are seeing is we're seeing really good signs of growth. I mean, obviously, off the back of the announcement of the cut in the OCR, people are, are certainly more optimistic. They're, they're getting out and about. that they, they are starting to spend more. And actually, in Christchurch, um, we've got the highest migration of any um, centre in New Zealand for two years in a row. So people are choosing to move here. They're choosing to set up businesses here. Uh, they're choosing to invest here. We've got record high enrolments at the University of Canterbury. So there's a lot of really good, positive things about Christchurch. Because like you say, you don't really want the attention on the stout. It's, it's 
bit embarrassing, isn't it? Businesses are also um, people and, you know, these are their livelihoods. And so I understand, you know, I really do understand and empathise with um, the frustration um, that, that these businesses, you know, have aired. We should be really, really pleased with what we've got. I mean, it really is a wonderful city. That's what we want for people to be talking about Christchurch for. Not for these issues, but, you know, we need to try and make sure that we you know, work with the council to actually find a solution here. With no sign of a resolution and the high season fast approaching, Christchurch City Council is under pressure to come up with a solution. But Sinead Gill thinks it's an unsolvable problem. I feel like I'm siding with Dimitris on this, that it seems like a lot of people are worried about something that really might not work, especially just based on my experience there going during the week. Um, but also, why not give it a go? Now an independent commissioner is being brought in. Tell me about that. So now that there's been this petition and I guess a bit more drama, they've said, OK, well, we're going to make an independent person decide. They haven't appointed anyone yet. The council say the earliest they're likely to get someone to look at this is the week of October 14. But they haven't actually decided whether or not they're going to hold a hearing this, or notify the um, the resource consent application. So there's actually a possibility that they decide, OK, well, we'll open this up for public feedback. And that would give them a lot, you know, that's a 50 business days um, if it's a notified consent, which basically means, you know, uh, I don't want to say Christmas time, but mm. you know, if you kind of if you follow the timeline, if there is a hearing associated with that, yeah, you know, we could be looking at a couple of months before a decision's made. There is some urgency to this, yeah, in the sense that the Arts Centre need to find a way to generate more revenue. They've uh, the ten year plan got signed off in June, so I guess it's a bit of a, a three year TikTok. That's it for today. The detail is a newsroom production supported by RNZ and NZ On Air. This episode was engineered by Alex Harmer and produced by Gwen McClure. Thank you to Sinead Gill and Leanne Watson. I'm Sharon Brett-Kelly. Mā te wā.